Hey everybody, I'm Richard. Welcome to Nightmares Anyone. Today I'm going to be doing a review on 1980s The Brownstone by Ken Yulo. And I'm going to talk to you guys about this book. It's coming out in June. Come back after the intro. Yeah, there's something outside. Oh my god, no. What in the hell is that? Would you guys like to be scared? Welcome to nightmares, anyone. get scared. Hey everybody, welcome back. I am drinking hot coffee out of my Jack Skellington mug, so hang on, I'm going to take a sip. As I said in the intro, I'm going to be and I'm wearing my uh, Exorcist shirt. There she is in all her horrifying glory. Your mother sucks cocks in hell, Karis. I had to say that. Yeah, I'm a bad, I'm, it, yeah, it might make me naughty, but so what? So, first off, uh, I wanna welcome some new subscribers to the channel. So in no particular order, let's welcome, hopefully you guys have been scared lately. Uh, yesterday was Easter. Today's Monday? Yeah, yesterday was Easter. Hopefully the Easter Bunny dropped some bloody-ass eggs at your place. Uh, so let's welcome in no particular order. Agador, Lila Moss, Big Boy Crafts... Big Boy Crafts with Nightingale, Rain King, Color and Chat with Joanna. Joanna's the biggest chicken shit in the world. She'll never watch any of these videos, but I'm glad she subscribed. Uh, <laughs> Kara House. No, Kara Howe. Sorry about that. Tom Maris and Jeff Thoreau. So welcome to the channel, everybody. I'm Richard. I'm the crazy one that reads all this stuff. And uh, we talk about horror. But I want to show you guys what I'm going to be working on here pretty soon. So uh, these are two new diamond painting canvases. Uh, let me roll them back. You guys have seen my Pennywise up there. Uh, you guys saw the book cover uh, replications that I did for um, Solomon Petcher's Ghost in the Attic. And Brandon Burnson's Halloween Key or Hillhaven Creeps and the Halloween King, and uh... <laughs> and uh, Purgatory. So uh... let's show you these. Here's the big one. This is Pennywise with the logo from It. I cannot wait to start this one. I love this dude. Even though I'm friggin' scared to death of clowns. And then here he is coming up from the basement. Yeah, I can't wait to do these. They're gonna be they're gonna be a lot of fun actually. Uh, yeah. So uh, let me roll these back up really quick. Hopefully you guys have been reading something good. Uh, I'm reading three books right now. I'm physically reading two books, and then I'm listening to two books. Uh, so, let's get into this review of Ken Yulo's The Brownstone from 1980. I'm going to pull this up a little bit. 
So uh, I'm gonna pop my glasses on really quick and uh, read the back. Now you guys can read the review that I did on this uh, on my Goodreads uh, page, my Goodreads account, which is right here. So it says the old sisters were so kind, so generous, so anxious to have them live in what seemed like the perfect house. They even offered Justin and Shandle the apartment rent free for the first six months. It seemed like a miracle just when they needed it most. So they moved in, eager to make the brownstone their home. Soon Shandal was hearing voices, seeing shadows, wondering about the sisters, who even seemed so strange. Even Justin seemed to be drifting away into a new passion, photography, which took him down to the world of darkness in the basement. But it wasn't until Shandal saw Justin's photographs that she began to make sense of it all. Not the dark mosaic of inexplicable events took on a terrifying shape, but that she could understand the sinister reason the sisters made them feel so welcome in the brownstone. Now, you can see this kind of resembles the old Flowers in the Attic books. The funny thing is, this book normally has a cutout right here with a setback, but this is the third printing of the book. Um, I am reading the second book right now, which is uh, Death Stone. Now, this book, this book is gonna, uh, yeah, it's 44 years old, but oh my God, this book still holds up. Uh, I remember when this book came out in 1980, I had just graduated high school the year before, and, uh, Everybody was reading this that summer, and I thought, uh, I remember buying it. I do have a first edition. Mine is probably up here somewhere on the wall or in a box in storage. Uh, but uh, the second and third book are right there. But this book, um, don't expect a super fast uh, <laughs> vomiting in your face bloody horror this is like a slow burn it creeps up on you but it doesn't take forever to get into the story um when Chandel and justin move in they meet magdalene and elizabeth right off and they're they both know that these women are very creepy in a way but they don't understand why so they move in uh they do get an amazing deal on this brownstone, which overlooks Central Park in New York. And uh, when they move in, Shandle's like, you know, this is going to be really, really expensive. You know, it's going to be hard to pay our bills. No sooner than a couple weeks after they move in, Justin loses his job as a playwright. Now, he's been working on a play that he wants to get produced and up on the stage off Broadway, and he loses his job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he fucking loses his job. Just when Shandle tells him she's pregnant. Oh, yeah. Okay, how are they going to live in this apartment um, and afford their first baby? Well, <laughs> things happen, and uh, one thing leads to another. And as Justin gets into his photography... Shandle notices things that he's taking pictures of. She hears weird noises in the night. She's seeing people in the hall um, between the floors. And she asks Magdalene and Elizabeth about it. And they don't want to talk to her. They just tell her, oh, you know, this building's old. We've lived here forever. Well, then when Shandle finds out that uh, one of the sisters was married at one time... And who his who her husband was makes Shandle start thinking about things completely different. Well, when some other people come into the mix, you're going to think, okay, this is just like Rosemary's Baby. Or this is just like The Sentinel. Um, yeah, this book is going to make you remember those books. If you read them or saw the movies, this is nothing like that. This book... It's got some of the most disgusting and gruesome scenes in it that it was just like, what the hell? 
And when you find out who these two old ladies are and what they are a part of, you're going to think, <laughs> okay, I need to, I need to really know who my neighbors are. I need to know who my neighbors are. And when, uh, <laughs> When Chantal starts discovering some of this gross ass stuff, she tells uh, Justin right away she wants to move. She wants to go to uh, Seattle. She wants to move to the West Coast. He tells her, good, you wanna move? Leave, I'm staying here. That's when all hell breaks loose. When uh, the sisters find out that Chantal wants to leave, oh God, no. They're going to stop her in every way they can. Chandel knows too much about what's going on in the brownstone. And when you find out, you think, wow, what the hell? You know, it's like, um, I don't know if the book is still in print. You, you can usually, well, if you're lucky enough, you can find copies at your local uh, used bookstore. I've been lucky enough to have books one, two, and three from uh, the original purchase dates when I bought them in the 80s. Now, the second book, um, I can't tell you what the second book's about because it would ruin <laughs> your surprise of what the first book is about. But the second book kicks in right away with some fucking slam-bam horror. But uh, yeah, I gave it four stars. Great book. It just took me took me about three and a half weeks to read because I just picked it up when uh, I was laying in bed or when I was at the doctor's office or whatever because I was listening to so much other stuff or working on a diamond painting or doing something. I don't regret reading it at all. And I'm glad I started the second book when I did because May 2nd, I'm going to the East Coast to uh, go to Washington, D.C. for my first time to spend time with some uh with a friend and her husband and um hopefully i'm gonna be able to go up to new york to queens and meet adriana uh adriana i know you're watching this video but everybody knows who adriana is she's the one that uh lives in queens and she took pictures of the sentinel house for me the sentinel brownstone and i'll pop one of those pictures up right here yeah, she she sent me these pictures and I was just like, oh my God. But it's been f almost five, year, five years since uh, Adriana and I came to become friends through uh, this and my previous channel. And um, I really hope I get a chance to meet her while I'm there. But uh, pick up the brownstone. It, it's, it, it's a very disturbing and very creepy book. But I really don't think you'll regret it. Now, the other book I'm going to talk about doesn't come out till June. However, I was lucky enough, Glenn Rolfe uh, wrote a phenomenal book in 2020 called Until Summer Comes Around. I gave it a five star. It was one of the best coming of age vampire novels. Oh my God, I've ever read. In fact, it, it, it just, it, it made me cry. It was just the most beautiful tale of a, a young boy who falls in love with a girl one uh, summer in Maine at the beach. And um, the story was just so good. So about a week ago, this came in the mail. And uh, Glenn had told me that he was writing a sequel. He told me he was going to shoot me out a copy. And uh, he did. And it came. And... Uh, I'm going to read to you, well, I don't want, well, I'll, I'll read you the back. Um, it doesn't really tell you anything about the, the first book. But he wrote on the inside, he said, Richard, not sure this one will make you cry, but I hope you enjoy the ride. Welcome back to the beach, Glen Rolf. And this is when the night falls. Uh, yeah, this comes out in June. Um, and... If you have, uh, comes out June 11th of this year. If you have read the first one until summer come, comes around, you are not going to want to miss this one. Now, as you can tell, I'm almost halfway through it. Uh, it is three, no, it's not even 300 pages. 233 pages. It's from, uh, God, I know this company's name. 
Um, oh my God, I'm having just a stupid brain fart. Uh, Flame Tree Press. My God, how could I? How could I not remember it? There's the logo right there. But uh, it says on the back. Well, I'll tell you all that when I get to the review. But uh, this should be my next review. Um, and like I said, pick up a copy of the Brownstone. It's a good horror novel. Uh, it just it, it it takes you back to a time when uh, horror was real was horror back then. Horror wasn't like it is now, where I, um, I don't know. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to slam any horror now because I have a lot of new horror favorite horror authors that I really, really dig in. But Ken, Ken Yulo wrote a lot of books. And um, I think the Brownstone, I think the Brownstone and its second book, The Deathstone and then The Bloodstone, I think they were his three biggest novels that he ever uh, sold. And um, yeah, it, it was just a great book. It says, uh, there is no place to run. There is no place to hide from the terror that lives in the Brownstone. It was terrifying, and it's it's very, very creepy in spots. And uh, like I said, just pick up a copy. But um, I want to tell you all, thanks for stopping by today. Just, I swear to God, something's in the house today. It's weird. It's just weird. Bruce is gone. Uh, the dog's laying down. The cat's asleep. But uh, it's about 12 noon-ish here on Monday, and... Uh, I don't know if Lenny here is like doing some shit or Lily's talking to me from out of the closet, but I don't know. It's just pretty weird today. But uh, stay scared, everybody. Pick up a good scary book. Have great nightmares. Uh, and if you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right there somewhere. And uh, hey, take care, you guys. Pick up a good scary book. And any comments or questions, drop them down below in the basement. I, I answer all uh questions and comments so you guys once again thanks for stopping by uh take care you guys and hey another big shout out to glenn rolfe if you if you've read uh, until summer comes around there's a sequel coming out in june if you haven't read it pick it up um because when i do that review on that book uh <laughs> you're gonna want to wish you'd read the first book but uh take care you guys i'm richard with nightmares anyone and I will see you later. Take care, you guys. Make sure you stay scared. Hey, you guys. Like always, it's me, Richard, with Nightmares Anymore. Don't forget to pick up a good scary book. Have great nightmares. <laughs> yeah, it kind of doesn't make sense. Have a great nightmare. But have a good nightmare. It's Being scared is good for you. Cleanse the old pumper. Um, be kind to people, be nice, enjoy your horror, stay scared, and you guys, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, you guys. He's creepy. He's very creepy. Yeah, he's creepy. I did a huge diamond painting of Sam. Maybe I'll give it away one day on this channel. Hmm. Take care, you guys. See ya.